Hey everybody. Hi everyone. Hi. So good to see you. Yes. And we are excited to have Rico. Mm -hmm. I kind of like saying that. I Rico. Know. <laughs> Rico is all the way from Chicago and he has got a story for you today. So would you make him welcome? Come on, send him up <laughs> some hearts. We're so glad that you joined mm -hmm. us and you agreed to do this with us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And Rico just said before we came on, he said, well, you're made an overcomer by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. <laughs> so we're going to get some of that testimony out of yes. you today. Um, All right. So the name of our devotion tonight is called Level Playing Field. Mm. I know you've heard that phrase before. It mm -hmm. came in my head today. I don't know. <laughs> and so it just started unfolding. But if you look at the picture behind us, there is nothing level about that picture. No. <laughs> Rico's turned this way just a, just a little bit. There you go. Okay, look, look at all that. Now, that's a real picture. It's gorgeous. absolutely yeah. gorgeous. <laughs> and that would be beautiful for a golf course, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But how would it work for football? Not well. <laughs> not well. Not, not, not basketball either. No, no yeah. <laughs> certainly not basketball, right? <laughs> well, and the reason I, I guess this phrase, it fits so well because Rico is a coach. Oh, okay. So, baseball. And baseball, I, I coach baseball and I coach basketball. Wow, baseball cool. and basketball. So he understands what this means. So um, have you ever tried to play ball on an unlevel field? Mm. Maybe football or something? Yes, on a hill. <laughs> on a hill. Oh, wow. Now, is that, is that an advantage for the other team? Um, well, the ones running the touchdown in the opposite direction. Yeah, so. it's, it's, an, right. it's an advantage, isn't yeah. it? And so they have to, it has to be fair. It has mm. to be a level playing field, right. doesn't it? Right. Um, so I think about David in the Bible when he said, I will walk in an even place mm. because the unlevel, uh, the unleveled plane or the, um, place that is unlevel, <laughs> make you fall, won't it? Oh, yes. Yeah, oh, yeah. Make unstable. you stumble. Unstable. 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 Have you ever fallen in the, in the field when I he's have. running the base? I've fallen in a field, in a, in a ditch, oh. <laughs> in the middle of the road. Middle of the road. <laughs> so stability is a, is a plus. Yeah, yes. that's right. Yes. So here's the origin of the phrase. It's where playing fields have a slope, which would clearly be an advantage for one side. Okay, mm. so I think about in tennis, mm. you know, what do they do in tennis? Say like if the sun is in their face. Oh gosh. What do they do? You can't see. You can't <laughs> see, but what do they have to do to, to make it fair? Because we're talking about level playing field to make it fair for the other team. What do they do? They switch, don't they? Oh. Like they have to, they switch sides. Yeah, keep it even. Oh, okay, yeah. that makes... They switch sides in the middle of it. Um, so volleyball, tennis, whatever, huh. they, they actually, they switch. So it's, makes sense. So it's fair. Yeah. Um, now, it's, so it's a situation, because I want to get what this really means, okay? This is what it is. It's a situation where everyone gets the same opportunity and a fair, equal chance at succeeding. That's right. And that's what we, we all want that, don't we, right. Rico? Correct, correct. A we fair, do. equal chance and an opportunity. And so it's just what it's right. It's just what's right, mm. isn't mm -hmm. it? Yes. Um, so uh, Rico experienced... Um, some unjust things, right? Oh, yeah. Where yeah. just, you know, have you ever said, well, that's not fair. I remember yes. when my, um, when my nieces, one of my nieces, she was little bitty and she, she couldn't talk during playing yet. And she said, you know, if, if one of the other kids did something, she does not pair. Does not pair. That's one of the first phrases they learned, don't they? <laughs> right, yes. Did you remember saying that as a oh, kid? Oh, yes, definitely. If I saw somebody doing something else and I wanted to, but I couldn't, that's not fair. Yeah, and it's all, always, I mean, it's in us. Mm -hmm. To want to be fair, right? I mean, to to want what's coming to us that's right, mm -hmm. is that no, and just and fair? Okay, so tell us. Um, Rico is going to go into his testimony. So you originally are from Carbondale, but you moved to Chicago and you were there for several years. So your parents grew up in the fifties. Mm -hmm. Parents grew up um, in the fifties and sixties. And so during this time, there was a lot of social struggles, right? And oh yeah, Lots. prejudice. Um, they dealt with it mm -hmm. at on their jobs mm -hmm. in different places. Tell us about that. Well, my parents grew up in the 50s and the 60s as teenagers, and they, um, they faced a lot of racial and uh, a lot of hardship mm. as far as um, where they could live, where they could shop, where they could send their children to school. Wow. Restaurants? Um, restaurants. My grandparents um, actually did a great deal of work for uh, separating the... Uh, the, the racial boundaries within the school system in oh, the 1960s. Wow. So wow. my Who grandmother, did that? my grandmother did. My Excellent. grandmother helped lead um, 
for desegregating the schools in the 1960s. Wow. So her children, my wow. grandmother and grandfather's 13 children, 13. cut attending school wow. uh, in Southern Illinois at the time. And they faced a lot of backlash for it. Mm. Um, my mom has scars on her legs just from kids driving by and throwing rocks and trucks. Are you serious? Like that. Yeah. So, but through it all, my, my grandparents never instilled hating or retaliating mm. in the same way that was retaliated towards them. Wow. Um, Isn't that something? So um, we grew up with that notion that we don't we don't hate. Um, mm, that's right. With the same hate that's that's given towards us. Mm. And, you know, can I insert this? I, I, I mean, I, I think this is something and it, it is very unlevel playing field when, when all the injustice yes. and it's it's you know, we're there. God has no respect or persons. We know no. that. And do you know that even though you're not skin to me, you're kin to me, mm -hmm. yes. and we're all the same race. We all, we, yeah. There's only one race. Right. What is that? The human race. The human race, and exactly we all right. came from Adam and Eve. And yes. you know, even science, we already knew that from the word. Yes. But even science has found <laughs> that, that out. Yes. Yes, that we've come from two. And it's just different levels of brown, mm -hmm. different levels of melanin in yes. our skin. And so it's unfortunate that you ever had to deal with Anything that or like struggle that. with it. So now, when your parents came home. Did they carry that sometimes that I mean because it had to be uh, build up some type of a frustration or Absolutely. even anger so tell me about your growing up oh yeah the, I, I believe the psychological damage mm. um, dealing with hardship really is a uh, is a is a byproduct of what happens in the home life of families um, with the divorce rate being high and as it was growing within the late 60s and 70s mm. our family kind of suffered the same consequences of, of uh, of just the hardships in society. Um, it caused alcoholism, you know, yeah. drug abuse, mm. um, you know, extramarital affairs and things like that. And and, uh, and it really broke down the, the, the context of what God calls, you know, the family he designed it to be. That's right, right. Dad, right. Children, and then it recycles itself. Mm. Uh, but most importantly, it's, it's the, uh, the, the fulfilling of God's promises within our family was, was never really established because of the brokenness from mm. their childhood. That's mm. right. So what happened was really a, a generational effect yes. that, that yeah. keeps going. That's and, right. And until someone jumps in there and stops yes. it. And says, this hate will That's not that. go down to mm. my generation. We will not, I mean, as far right. as prejudice and yes. social injustice, it will not go down to my children. I will teach them to love God and love one another, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So Galatians 3, 28 says, There is no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. So Romans 2 and 11 mm -hmm. says, For there is no respect of persons with God. That's right. That's mm -hmm. what he says. What does respect there mean in the Greek? It's partiality or favoritism. He said, I won't have it. <laughs> I won't right. have it among my children. You know, and we can't, like in our own children growing up, that's one thing we can't even, uh, we, we can't exemplify that. Yeah, like showing favorites or picking. Yeah, that's right. Like, I know my mom was always issues. big on that. Like, you know, I love you all the same. That's right. <laughs> so, but now Rico, you didn't, you didn't grow up with your biological father, right? And you no. didn't, you didn't know him. Tell us how that, you know, you, you tried to get to know him and, and you said that yeah, the door I, was closed uh, in your face. I think my, my biological father still has, to this day, still has a lot of anger mm. and resentment within his heart um, that, that kind of fractured our relationship. Yeah. And in and, and, um, military terms, that's called PTSD, mm. um, post-traumatic stress yes. disorder. And, and I believe a lot, of, a lot of people from that generation really suffers from that. Um, yeah. Yes. When they can't let go of the pain and it stops yes. them growing spiritually, most importantly, mm -hmm. but um, relationally at the same time. So I had didn't didn't know my real dad. My my stepdad was there, and we were like Tom and Jerry um, <laughs> as, as, as as youngster and, and disciplinary. So that, that didn't work out too well. Uh -huh. and by the grace of God, my stepfather is still here today. Um, <laughs> so I am I'm in a season of, of healing. Yes, and yes. Not based on my own feelings, but by, by the word of God, because. Yes. Um, he doesn't really know the Lord, and, and I've come to know the Lord for the past 20 years, and mm. so my relationship has developed, but God expects me to go and, and help him develop his relationship. That's right, that's time. right. So, well, you know, you never, you expressed that you never heard the words, I'm proud of you. Mm. Yes. Never. You never heard, the, heard those never words. Heard Did that. you ever hear, I love you? From, I, I heard, I love you, but 
because there was so much pain and so much sorrow and hurt, it didn't feel like an authentic I love you. I got gotcha. you. Mm. So you longed for that. And uh, Psalms 27 and 10 says, Even if my father and mother abandon me, the Lord will hold me close. And oftentimes, especially what you have faced, they couldn't give you what they didn't have. And so right. it was just right. so full of hurt. And, yes. you know, we, we say this a lot, hurting people hurt people. Amen. But God said, look, I will never abandon you. And so mm -hmm. you said you went through a time of depression. Yes, I went through um, a time of depression in the mid-90s as a young man. Um, particularly in 1994, I was heading into my first surgery. Uh, I, I went to the operating table eight times because I had a benign tumor at wow. the base of my neck. Um, now tell us, one day you said you saw blood coming out of your ear. Mm -hmm. I had mm. blood coming from the ear, so I went and got checked out, and the doctor diagnosed me as having a, a tumor, and uh, and I didn't I didn't take it as serious as I thought it was, mm. and um, because of the result of that, I I ended up going back nine times. Wow! 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 And the last time was two thousand two thousand. Five, December of December of 2005 was my last surgery. You went through a lot of pain, didn't mm -hmm. you? Lots of pain. And so you leaned on the Lord, but there's something so special that happened during this time. Oh, I yeah. can't wait to get to this. But you may be experiencing depression or mm. oppression. And depress, I mean, it's oppression means to push you down with force. Mm. It's the next level. Remember, if the devil can impress you, he'll depress you. Impress yes. you means to draw your attention away. Then mm. he can depress you, to push you down. That's right. Mm. But oppressed means to be pushed down, to crush you. But what he wants is the fourth, is to possess you. Yes. And so you have to say, I'm not impressed. Yeah. Don't even let him get past that first. That's right. Okay, so Psalms 9, 9 through 11 says, The Lord is a shelter for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. Those who know your name trust in you. For you, O Lord, do not abandon those who search for you. Sing praises to the Lord who reigns in Jerusalem. Tell the world about his unforgettable deeds. That's what you're doing now. Yes, God is using yes. you. He is reaching children. He's reaching young people yes. and making a difference. He just had a phone call from one that he had mentored from the time he was a, a little sixth grade sixth, sixth grade, grade. Wow. He's a sophomore in college yes oh, wow. i mean <laughs> so he's having an impact coaching them and speaking into their lives so you had separation issues as a mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. your childhood and then you said in the 90s you got in the wrong crowd and mm -hmm. and got in uh you had you said issues with purity yeah purity issues um hanging out with friends you know the bible says uh, a man of many foes uh comes to ruin Mm -hmm. And I had lots of them that were just ungodly, <laughs> we'll say that. And see, you, you were expressing that you had no father to lead mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. But so the kids led him, other, mm -hmm. you know, who was right. also needing right. led, you exactly. know. And so bad company, well, here's 1 Corinthians 15 and 33 says. Uh, do not be misled, bad company corrupts good character. So that's what mm -hmm. you were experiencing during mm -hmm. that time. Yes. And so um, you expressed that you started dealing with anger mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. resentment and you didn't want to have anything to do with church at the time is no. that right but now when the tumor when you were diagnosed with a tumor brain tumor um you had somebody that did not give up on you didn't you oh no I what, what was her name my uh my aunt bertha my aunt bertha <laughs> god bless yeah. you aunt yeah. bertha is she still living no she actually passed away about seven years ago but she hung on and stood in the gap for you didn't mm. she Absolutely. did you say she was outside the operating room or in the waiting yes. room yes i uh i my first surgery was about 21 hours long. Oh, wow. And, uh, and I woke up um, with, with 20 tubes in my body, in my head. Um, wow. Breathing machine. And I woke up in the worst pain I would, wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. Mm. Wow. And, uh, and as I woke up in the ICU, I looked out and I saw my aunt looking over me and she was praying. And, and I just said, somebody help me. Say and it out loud. Would you say it? I this said, somebody help me. And... I heard the Lord say, I'm right here. Oh, oh wow. guys. Wow. It was like, it was an audible. Mm. Was it was an, an audible aud voice. An audible voice. Jesus said, I'm right here. Right Look, here. right. He's, a, he's <laughs> just, he's <laughs> right. Exactly and right. he said, I am right here. Mm. It, and so fair, just, equal. I love that. Mm. And so her being outside, you said that um, she was the force behind your mm. Christianity, mm -hmm. before, behind you making uh -huh. that choice to serve God. And you said you because before you knew about God, mm -hmm. but you didn't know no, him I didn't know. until ah. now. So First John one and nine says, "If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to clean, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness." I love that he's faithful yeah. in what? 
just. just. He's faithful yes, and he just. Is. <laughs> and so it's a level playing field because, mm -hmm. you know, somebody may have committed murder and God forgives them. Yes. Or somebody might have done something else, committed adultery, and God mm -hmm. forgives them. You may have gossiped, and God, yes. and you've asked God to forgive you. He forgives you. But it's a level playing field. Yes. You see what I'm saying? It's like he doesn't hold one sin above the other. other. No. You know, sometimes we do. Mm -hmm. No misdemeanor or felony sins. That's yes. right. <laughs> Say that again, out loud. Yeah, no misdemeanor or felony sins. They're all equal. Yes. All equal. Yes. Level playing field. <laughs> God is just. It is a level playing field. So when he forgives us, he expects us to do the same. No matter what we've done, he makes it fair across the board. I love that. Mm. So. You said you could relate to the Samaritan woman. When mm -hmm. God came into your life and you really started serving him and you realized that same water that he promised her, mm -hmm. you could have. Oh, yeah. yes. And think about the Samaritan. Look, she also experienced prejudice. Right. And, you know, yes. Remember the Samaritan and Jews, they had the Absolutely. prejudice against one another. But when you became established, you became, you got married. Mm -hmm. Got married. Got and divorced. Got divorced and became a single, single dad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You raised your daughter from the age of three to 19. Wow. Three to wow. 19. Quite a, quite a man. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the kids, so now what you do, you spend your life pouring out to others, don't you? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. God has taken that anger out. And, and so you are, uh, you're ministering here now already. Yes. You dove in head yes. first. Yes. And he's, he's working, he's works at the youth. youth. Yeah. He's there every week playing ball with everybody and just getting straight involved. That's right. So, um, you do it. Kids started, you start a fellowship, um, with in ministry relationship you said that's how you these kids are growing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you're able to to sit down and understand because you've been through a lot of this stuff yes. so micah 6 and 8 says no O oh people the lord has told you what is good and this is what he requires of you to do what is right to love mercy and to walk humbly with your god so he's saying don't have respect for anybody else love each other yes psalms 33 4 through 5 says for the word of the lord is upright and all his work is done in faithfulness he loves righteousness and justice the earth is full of the steadfast love of the lord Look, his love is steadfast. It's, I mean, it is powerful. And so, Jasmine, you had a question for Rico. And I, I want to say this first, that I, I learned that today I looked up your, up your name, and it mm -hmm. actually means... Um, it just went blank. <laughs> it's, it's really special. Oh, here it is. Brave leader. Ooh. A brave, brave leader. leader. And in order to you experience bravery, you've had to go through some hardships. Mm -hmm. And you've had to go through some stuff, and you dug in, and you know you've, you're seeing God multiply your life. Is that oh, yeah, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Wow. Um, <laughs> I think my question would be, what would be your advice to someone that is struggling with like not being able to forgive? Because you've obviously dealt with that. Your family has. It's been a generational curse that you've tried to put a stop. You've put a stop to. Mm -hmm. So, what would you advise people to do that also it's going through that? Um, you know, Scripture says. Um, God says, if, if, we, if we can't forgive, then he can't forgive. Right. So first and foremost, forgiveness always has to be based on God's word. Mm. And like in, in John chapter 4, the woman met Jesus and, mm. and, uh, and Jesus explained to her, he said, the water that I give you yes. will well up to eternal life. And like all of us, we all have this desire, this passion, yes. this hunger, this need for relationships. Um, to be accepted, to be approved of, right. to feel equal. Yes. Um, mm. But most importantly, um, that all just points us right back to God because yeah. th as the scripture said, God is just. That's yes. right. Yes, yeah. he is. Yes, he is. <laughs> so God has this, this beautiful plan for us, but mm. we will never understand his plans uh, mm. until we understand his will. Mm. Yes. And, mm. and when you understand his will, the plans will unfold right before your eyes. That's so wow. good, Rico. Oh, yes. You know, I, I want to say this. I've said it before, but I want to say it again. Forgiveness is a choice. Mm. Forgiving is a process, but forgiven is done. Mm. And that's when we can even begin to pray for those that have hurt us. Yes. Then all of a sudden, one day, we just don't, when we even see them in public, we it's don't feel body. that anymore. Yeah. It's mm. out of there. Mm. But it, it takes really just, okay, I'm going to pray. And that's what you said. You're, you're praying for, for those that you're, you've struggled with. Mm -hmm. And, you know, God's doing the work. And so I want to tell you, Rico, you are my brother. Jasmine. Yes, yes, Amen. he's my brother. We Look, we are the family of God. That's we right. are the family of God. <laughs> and and so, you know what? And we're doing ministry together. Yes. Playing on that same level, yes. playing field. Yes. All right, so Rico, would you lead us in prayer today? I sure will. Father God, I just thank you for this opportunity, Lord. We can come before you. Um, Lord, not with the 
packed out auditorium, mm. but Lord, we can come to you on yes. social media uh, to spread your love, to, to understand what it means to forgive, yes. Jesus. and to, to be surrounded by your presence and your power. Father yes, God. Father. And Lord, I just pray that whoever is listening to this um, would receive you right now in the name of Jesus. Yes. Lord, they would experience peace, prosperity, yes. mm. health, and wealth. Lord, not uh, that we go out and spend this foolishly on ourselves, Lord, but we use it to glorify your name. Yes, and God, I just pray for the rest of this time tonight. I pray for safe travel and um, a peace that surpasses understanding, as your word promises. Mm -hmm. And we love you, and we pray this Thank all in you, Jesus, Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Look, we really do love you, yes. and we are so glad you joined us. So have a great rest of your night. All right. Bye-bye.